Hey, welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Tonight, we're talking about using a broadcast style dynamic microphone on a modern ICOM radio like the ICOM 7300. There are things that you need to know to be successful. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a huge headache. Let's get into it. Let's start with the most important thing somebody could tell you about your ICOM 7300. What's the best microphone to use? Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, this microphone is the HM219. It comes with the ICOM 7300, just a standard hand mic. And I think a lot of new hams look at this microphone and say, it really can't be that good, right? Man, it's so tiny. It's the stock microphone. It's gotta be junk, right? Absolutely not. This microphone gets so many unsolicited, awesome audio reports on the air. Uh, if you don't need to have both hands free, just stick with this microphone. It sounds phenomenal. Remember, it was engineered to work with the 7300 by ICOM. It should sound good, and it does. This is a phenomenal microphone. In fact, I've made videos about how to make your audio sound superb, whether you're busting pileups or doing a rag chew with this mic. That's the number one thing I can tell you. If you don't mind holding a mic in one hand, you already got your problem solved. So that begs the question, why do people then get a different microphone if the stock one is so good? Well, uh, some people like to have both hands free when using the radio. This is the Heil FS3 foot switch. Um, just very simple. Uh, this actually is what you put under your desk, put your foot on it, and it will key the radio when you push down on the foot switch. It allows you to have both hands free for typing, uh, operating your logbook on the computer while you're actually on the radio. But now let's get into talking about why this microphone, if you just bought the mic and plugged it into the radio, is not the way to go. Now, this is what's known as a dynamic microphone. The ICOM 7300 is designed for what's called an electret, not an electric, electret condenser microphone. So that is what the ICOM is engineered for, while this is a completely different style of microphone known as dynamic. Where that runs into a problem is, Naturally, this microphone does not really have enough gain to actually be driven right into the radio. So what you end up having to do is, is crank your microphone gain up to 75, 85, even 90% mic gain, and maybe even turn on some compression just to properly drive your audio levels if you were just putting this microphone, which is the Heil PR781, directly into the IC7300. Okay, okay, you're probably asking yourself, well, who cares? I'll run my mic gain at 90%. I don't mind. I'll turn the compression on. I like compression. Well, here's where you run into a problem. There are a lot of people also that like to run Vox. You are not able to run Vox on the 7300, which of course is voice activated hands-free with this microphone without the addition of what's known as a preamp. A preamplifier, simply as the name sounds, basically amplifies the sound signal uh, going from the microphone to your radio. Now, I've run this microphone without a preamp and I've cranked the mic gain up, I've run compression, and guess what? It works. I don't use Vox, so I really don't care about that. And the mic sounds great, even without the addition of a preamp. But if you add a preamp in the mix, it allows you a lot more flexibility and control. But let me warn you now, if you start going down this path, it is a rabbit hole, a rabbit hole. You will start getting into like my headspace now, which is constantly tweaking, tuning, making little changes, and constantly worrying about your audio, when in reality, us as ham radio operators on SSB really shouldn't be that concerned because uh, we really don't have high fidelity audio on ham radio. So all the messing around with EQ and settings and tone really doesn't make that huge of a difference in the first place. Let me show you the tube preamplifier that I use, and I highly recommend it for anyone looking for a really nice, simple, and cheap preamplifier for their dynamic mic on the 7300. The one that I have, I really love, is you actually can control the tone on the preamp itself of the actual audio signal, which is really, really cool. Let's take a look. This is the Applied Research and Technology Studio V3 tube preamplifier, and the tube part is very important. With tubes, we tend to get a little bit of a warmer, uh, more kind of just bassy tone to the audio. And that's exactly what I want for my SSB signal. Uh, also, we have this voicing knob. I can actually change uh, the amount of bass and tone uh, that I have on my signal from neutral to warm and bassy, um, and also some other vocal settings. I can actually adjust it. It's kind of like a crude EQ, uh, just by changing the tone before it goes into the radio. That is a super cool feature of this particular unit. 
So in terms of my settings or my knobs here that I run on the Studio V3, uh, let's take a look first at these middle buttons. I do tend to run, when on the radio, a plus 20 decibel gain boost. I, of course, have my phantom power plus 48 volts turned on to power the microphone. Uh, and then you'll see over here on the input and the output. These two things are key to understand what they do. Now, driving the tube is the input. So if you really want more of an effect about whatever you're choosing here for your tone, uh, you want to drive the input harder than the output. Uh, not to mention it tends to be a little bit less noisy, but at the same time, you still don't want to overdrive the input. I tend to keep my input somewhere between 10 and 1, and my output is usually about 8 to 9.30 here on the right. And the reason this output is so low is that, remember, I have that uh, plus 20 decibel gain boost right here. If I had this off, this output may be around noon or 2 o'clock, somewhere in that region. But because I run the boost, uh, I keep the output very, very low, and that gives me a nice, clean audio signal. Let me actually show you just how much of a difference this voiced valve technology with this knob here actually makes on this preamp. Let's take a listen. All right, for this demonstration, I want to start here uh, just to the left of neutral, and I want to demonstrate exactly the differences that this thing can make just from changing this knob to that tone and that warmth in your signal. So let's start right here on the neutral vocal, one, two, three, four, five. Going to straight neutral, one, two, three, four, five. Let's jump it up to the uh, piano, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, what a difference that makes. Let's go to vocal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's now punch it all the way over to the warm vocal, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you should have been able to easily tell just how much of a difference some of these settings make, especially to that low end warm tone that a lot of us are looking for, especially if you really enjoy 75 and 80 meters. So if you want to buy this unit, I'll put a link down in the description below. Uh, go ahead and click on it and you can buy it from Amazon um, so you'll easily be able to find it. I cannot recommend this thing enough. It just works flawlessly with the ICOM 7300 and the uh, Heil PR781, not to mention any other dynamic microphone, will work just fine with this preamp. It really does work great for ham radio. If you have any questions, drop me a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe. Click that like button. It'll help share this video out to other hams looking for this information. And uh, I'll catch you again next time.